nothing that no other friend could do. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. He's awesome, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. to me with new assurance. More and more I learn to trust his saving grace. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Till someday His blessed face. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the of pleasing you, grant that we may so pass these hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn, God of Mercy, God of Grace.
Happy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Blessed be the Lord our God. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Spirit of God. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 87 to 14. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow 
and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretch out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 5 reading verses 1 to 7 let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard my beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill he dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines he built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed. And it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. This is the word of the Lord. Plan of Salvation, found on page 56. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with all the spiritual blessings of heaven. God chose us in Christ before the world was made to be holy and blameless and to live by his love in his presence. God planned through Jesus Christ to bring us to himself as his children, that we might praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. In Christ we gain redemption through his blood. Our sins are forgiven. How rich is the grace of God. A reading from the Word of God, written in Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 4b to 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. 
Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Gradual hymn, My Song is Love Unknown.
in Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, a very good morning to you all, sisters and brothers. What a time we live in. It is such a time of much uncertainty. Sometimes the one thing that seems certain is death. Increasingly, we hear of people we know who have been infected with COVID-19 or who have died. This past week, we heard the news of President Donald and Mrs. Trump having been diagnosed with COVID-19. We must now face the uncertainty of how various markets may be challenged around uncertainties regarding the health of the president. Will there be a domino effect on the price of oil? To what extent is American national security challenged? Will any of this impact the tourist industry of small nation states like Jamaica? Close at home within your church family, you must face questions like what is happening with those you have not seen in several months? What is happening with those who go to work, bank, supermarket, pharmacy, but not to church? What is all this saying to us? What is happening with those below age 40? How are things going with their walk of faith? Do they remember us, their church family? To be clear, we want everyone to be safe. We, however, want to keep in touch and to grow together in our walk of faith. In the midst of our concerns, let us seek to produce the fruits of the kingdom of God. In today's gospel, Jesus acknowledged that those called to bear the fruits of the kingdom were not doing so at all. He said in Matthew 21, around verse 43, Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. This is a good time to remember that life is much more than COVID-19 
and the struggle to survive. Life is also about the kingdom of God. It is also about things eternal and not just things temporal. How might we produce the fruits of God's kingdom? This is not an easy time for church at all and ministry in general. Doing house to house visits and going to sit and talk with someone is not the thing in this time of health and safety concerns. Then there are those folks who really want to come out to their church, but they have underlying conditions which make them more vulnerable. Add to that the aging concern and other levels of increased vulnerability. It is for a time such as this that we are called to still be the church and to still reach out to others and to still be the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus Christ our Lord. Some of the things we may do in the vineyard of God's harvest field include teaching someone how to use WhatsApp or Zoom or Microsoft Teams, etc. It takes patience. Some elderly folk will actually learn over time. If you are patient, with them on the phone and keep a little practice over a few days to help the individual become comfortable with a particular technological facility. Soon that individual will learn how to make use of WhatsApp and how to join online Bible study. I have found that an area of ministry that we may also engage is just being hospitable. It is so easy to get caught up with the bad habit of just passing people without giving a greeting. When you do your walking exercise, do you remember to greet others? Of course, while keeping a safe distance. We have this strange sounding gospel reading in which a landowner sent his workers to collect his produce from the land that was leased to tenants. The tenants beat, killed and stoned those sent to them. Finally, the landowner sent his son to them in the hope that they would have some regard for him. They again beat and killed him also. Something we might miss in this parable is that when Jesus asked the scribes and the Pharisees what should be done with those tenants, it is they who suggested violence, not Jesus. They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus used this as an opportunity to affirm Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. Eventually, they realized that Jesus was talking about them. Have there been moments when we as church have been like those wicked tenants? Have there been times when we too have hurt or turned away those who represent God's kingdom? Have there been times when we too like the scribes and the Pharisees, fail to realize how guilty we are of not bearing the fruits of God's kingdom. When next you sing, Christ is our cornerstone, on him alone we build. With his true saints alone the courts of heaven are filled. On his great love our hopes we place of present grace and joys above. Remember, that in the midst of life's uncertainties, Christ is our cornerstone. Christ is our sure foundation. Christ is our healer. Christ is our hope. We rest in Christ's love. We live and move and have our being in Christ who calls us still to bear fruits of the kingdom. May we continue to be agents of righteousness, peace, and love. May God's kingdom be realized in and through us. God bless and keep you all. Amen.
We will continue this morning's service, will affirm in our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord's Prayer.
shows your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask. Accept through the merit and meditation of Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful Father, thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. You have said that you are a good Father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord our God blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength be unto you, our God, forever and ever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, O oh Lord, give us this day such a blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'd like to thank you for joining us in our weekly Sunday streaming service this morning. I'd like to extend our thanks to our dear Reverend Sean Major Campbell for his Food for Thought message this morning. I hope each person took their part out of his lovely message this morning. And I'd like also like to extend our thanks and appreciation to the ICT team for making this possible, this streaming possible every Sunday for the past few weeks. Join us again next Sunday for our weekly stream.
birthdays for this week. For the month of October, I like to announce that the cures each church will be open each Sunday for regular service. St. Boniface starting at 8 a.m., St. Peter's and St. Martin's at regular 10 a.m. every Sunday for the month of October. For those who are unable to attend the morning services, you can still tune in on our streaming service every Sunday on YouTube. Additional notices. Tune in for Radio Jamaica 94FM at 4.45pm today for our diocesan program. Think on these things. For our members who cannot access social media, there is a delayed radio broadcast of the morning service at St. Andrew Parish Church every Sunday at 6 p.m. on Love 101 FM. Please join Mrs. Sasha Wright of the St. Andrew Parish Church on Zoom this evening at 7 p.m. as she discusses the do's and don'ts of leading Bible study. We also want to extend our condolences to Reverend Lenworth Horton, whose mother, Mrs. Ina Horton, died on September 27. Also condolences to Sister Donna Rotham, whose uncle, Leslie Sangster, died on October 2 in Georgia, USA. Please pray for these persons, Reverend Horton and Sister Donna. Please also pray for the sick and shut in, especially in these times, and call them if you can, or close in him. A charge to keep, I have.
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord.